Lifeline family. Woo. <laughs> Welcome to Lifeline once again. We are here to listen from God. And before we start, let us commit this time with a word of prayer. Father, thank you, Father, for today that we can be gathered to listen from you, Father. Father, I pray, Father, that you will speak to your people today. Use me, Father, as your vessel to speak forth your word, Father. Father, I pray, Father, that I will empty myself, that you will be the one that speak through everything, Father. I pray, Father, that your name be glorified in this place, that we'll be able to be strengthened in our faith by the end of this service, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. So before I start, firstly, I'd like to uh, thank God for giving me the message to share to all of you. I'm very blessed through this message. I'm sure that you'll be blessed as well. And notwithstanding, I also want to thank Pastor as well as Sister Sharon for this opportunity to share the word in this pulpit. So today, church, as I mentioned, I want to share something related to persecution and challenges. Throughout in part today, we can see that all of us, all of us go through challenges, go through persecution. And this is not something uncommon. This is something very, very common. And that's why when Paul was writing to Timothy, he mentioned this to him. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Which means everyone who wants to live a godly life will suffer persecution. And Jesus said this in John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, you will have trouble, you will have persecution, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And today, we know who can overcome the world. The scripture says, who can over overcome the world? Those who have the right faith. Let us see this in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God of God. You know, a lot of people stop until here, verse 5. As long as you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you can overcome the world. But is that true? No. Because the verse continue, the verse continue, who can overcome the world? It's those who have faith in what Jesus has done. Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. Not only believing Jesus is the Son of God, but believing that He came by water and blood. Let us see this. This is He. Pay attention here. This is verse 5. The continuation is verse 6. This is He who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness. Because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So who can overcome the world? Those who have the right faith. Those who have faith in Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. Those who have faith in the water, the blood, and the Spirit. Because there are three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. There are three witnesses on earth, the water, the blood, and the Spirit. Amen? And let us go back to the verse just now. It says, These things I have spoken to you, 
that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. It says these things I have spoken to you. What are these things that Jesus spoke to his disciples? Let us start from verse 1. Jesus warns and comfort his disciple. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I have told you of them. So from here, we can see that Jesus is telling them that, hey, disciples, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that they are offering a service to God. We will come to that place where the persecution will go so bad that we will even be killed for the sake of the gospel. And today we're going to see from the life of Paul how he go through all these challenges and persecution. But before that, Jesus also spoke a lot about this. Persecution. And last month, in the month when we learned about the focus on signs, we talked a lot about Matthew chapter 24. Let us see what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 to 14. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be safe. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Even Jesus, here we can see that he already warning us that the time will come that we will be handed over to be persecuted, put to death, hated by all nations. But only the one who stands firm to the end will be safe. And that's why we need to be strong in our faith. We need to persevere. We need to strengthen our faith so that we can face this persecution. The time is coming where the world will be ruined. Everything will collapse. It's in the scripture. Whatever that is in the scripture is true and it will come to pass. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The star will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. This is Jesus telling us that, hey, do you know that the world will be destroyed? The sun will be darkened? The moon will not give light? The star will fall? All these things will happen. And time will come, it will become so challenging that God is saying, if He don't shorten it, no one will be safe. But for the sake of the elects, He will shorten it. Let us see this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. And if you remember, last week I shared a sermon, the eternal city, and I ended that sermon with a verse taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. We born again child of God, we don't belong here. Just like what I shared last week in the life of Abraham. 
Even though he was already standing in that promised land, he looked for that eternal city. The city whose founder and the builder, the architect is God himself. The new heaven and new earth. And we as the born again child of God, we should live like that as well. Why did Peter say this? Nevertheless, according to his promise, we look for new heaven and new earth. Why did he say this? Because previous verses, he will say about the destruction of this world. The destruction of the earth. Let us read from verse 10 onwards. The day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heaven and new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Why does it say about new heaven and new earth? Because the old one will be perished. The old one will be burned. The old one will melt away with fervent heat. And today, I have entitled my message as In the Light of Eternity. In the Light of Eternity. And this sermon title is taken from a passage of scripture which is our main source text for today. But before we read that, right, I just want to summarize the whole thing. Is that when we face persecution, when we face challenges, when we face difficulties, we need to see it in the light of eternity. Now, let us read our main source text. I have taken this from the Passion Translation, TPT Translation. Let us read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 18. Treasure in clay jars. We are like common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure within so that this immeasurable power will be seen as God's, not ours. Though we experience every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. At times, we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but not out. We continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies so that the resurrection life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. We consider living to mean that we are constantly being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. So then, death is at work in us but it releases life in you. We have the same spirit of faith that is described in the scripture when it says, first I believe, then I spoke in faith. So we also first believe, then speak in faith. We do this because we are convinced that he who raised Jesus will raise us up with him. And together, we will all be brought into his presence. Yes, all things work for your enrichment so that more of God's marvelous grace will spread to more and more people, resulting in an even greater increase of praise to God, bringing Him even more glory. So no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer person gradually wears out, our inner being is renewed every single day. We view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal, weighty glory far beyond all comparison because we don't focus our attention on what is seen but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary but the unseen realm is eternal. From here, I've taken my sermon title 
as you can see here, we view our slight, short-lived trouble in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as a substance that produces for us an eternal, weighty glory far beyond all comparison. From here, we can see that Paul is the one that writes this book, the book of Corinthians. He said, we as the child of God, we are to view our trouble in the light of eternity. And that's why he repeated this in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul considered the suffering that he is going through at that present time to be not worthy as compared to the glory that is to come. All of us go through challenges, right? All of us go through persecution. All of us go through trouble, suffering. But Paul is reminding us that, hey, what is this trouble as compared to the glory that is to come? Do you know that each of every trouble, suffering, persecution, and the things that we are going through is a process? It's a strengthening process that God is putting us into. My first point, the strengthening process. The strengthening process. Let us go back to our main text for today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. We view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal, weighty glory far beyond all comparison because we don't focus our attention on what is seen but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary but the unseen realm is eternal. Look who is writing. Paul. He said, you have trouble, you have tribulation, you have suffering, you have persecution. View it in the light of eternity. When you view it in the light of eternity, you will realize that it is a slight, some translation says, little, short, momentarily. Light, some translation said, your light momentarily affliction. It is something very small as compared to the eternity. And that's why we are to view our challenges in the light of eternity. Instead of looking at it, wow, my challenges is so big, so great, I don't think even God can solve this. No, God can solve it. But how we view our issue, how we view our challenges, how we view our trouble, do we view it with our own naked eyes and see how big is it? Or do we view it in the light of eternity? What is this as compared to the glory that is to come? Paul is able to say this because he has gone through all of, all of the things that I don't think we will even go through. He go through so much. That's why he can say this. Hey guys, you, get, you got trouble? You got difficulties? View it in the light of eternity. View it in the light of eternity. Let us see. This is what Paul went through. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 27. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder, being put in prison more often, being whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders give me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. 
three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentile. I have faced danger in the cities, in the desert, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers, but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. You want to talk about challenges? You want to talk about trouble? You want to talk about persecution? This man went through it all. Look at how hard his life was. Drifted at the sea, at the desert, stoned so many times, persecuted, people reject him, both from the Jews and the Gentile. He faced danger in the city, in the desert, in the sea, being betrayed by his own people. He have went through it all. And when someone who have went through it all say it, it is with more conviction. Because we know that the person is saying it not for the sake of saying, but because the person went through it all. And there is an incident. Paul was preaching in Iconium. And after that, he, he went to a place. Let us see here. This is what he said to the people in that city. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exalting them to continue in faith and saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Let us read together. We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Entering the kingdom of God is not walking in the park. You just walk and then you reach the kingdom of God. Many preachers are saying, God is good. God will give you peace. God will give you comfort. God will give you everything that you need in this world. Of course He will. But we must endure tribulation, persecution. This is what Jesus is warning his disciples about, isn't it? That you will be put in prison. They will kill you and say that I'm offering God a service. So, we can see that entering the kingdom of God is not easy. And that's why we need to be strengthened in our faith. Our first point is what? The strengthening process. Whatever that we are going through, whatever that you shared in your impart just now, is whatever that we are going through. Know that all that we are going through is a strengthening process. We don't suddenly become strong. We don't suddenly have a muscle popping up just by sleeping. We work out. We go to gym. We eat healthy food. We know how to take care of ourselves physically. But what about spiritually? Do we also take care of our spiritual body like that? Strengthening ourselves. Do you know that each and every tribulation and persecution and challenges that you are facing is a strengthening process? As how I have started just now, the world will be destroyed. We will, put, we will be put to death if we stand strong in this faith. It will come a time that the world will need us to preach the gospel. Are we strong enough to share at that time? And Paul is saying this, amazed me, because just right before this, he was stoned until people thought he died. 
Let us see what happened in verse 1, the starting of this chapter. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and of the Greek, believed. Pay attention to this, verse 2. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of His grace, granting sign and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentile and the Jews with their rulers, they abused and stoned them. They became aware of it and fled to Ristra and Derby, cities of Lyconia, and to the surrounding region. And they were preaching the gospel there. They were abused. They were stoned. They don't care. They move on to another place. And just now, the verse we saw, this one, he was strengthening the believers in this city. This is verse 21 to 22, right? Let us see the two verses before that. Verse 19 to 20, what happened to Paul? Then Jews from Antioch and Iceum came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. You see, in verse 19 to 20, we can see what happened to Paul. He was stoned. He was stoned by those people. And then, they dragged him out of the city. They thought, they, they thought that he died. That is the amount of persecution that he went through. But what happened after that? He stand up again. He stand up again and he preach. That is where verse 21 comes in. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Ristra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the soul of the disciple, exhorting to continue in the faith and saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. As I mentioned, Entering the kingdom of God is not easy. It requires faith. And that faith needs to be strong. If our faith is not strong, we will be swayed very, very easily. Like the wave. One day I'm very faithful, another day, another day I'm not. One day I'm very uh, passionate for God, one day I'm not. When our faith is not strong, we'll be like yo-yo. One day up, one, way, one day down. That's why whatever challenges and persecution and troubles that we are going through, know that it's a strengthening process. The challenge of today will make me stronger so that I can face a greater challenge tomorrow. If I don't go through the challenge today, tomorrow when another challenge, the greater one comes, I don't know how to handle because I have never been through challenges. Just remember this, that God, this is a strengthening process. I know that you are strengthening my faith. There will come a day where the tribulation is even greater than what I'm facing right now. Maybe you're just facing some, you know, work issues, which is very common to all working class people. Maybe some relationship issue, family issue. Different people have different issue. But one thing that we know, all of us have issue. How are we going to face it? Are we going to face it with our own strength or are we going to face it with God? And this strengthening process is not something that happened overnight. It's not Today, <laughs> I decided to strengthen myself. Tomorrow, I become very strong. No, 
it is a process. And that's why, just now the verse, it says this, no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer person gradually wears out, our inner being is renewed every single day. The renewing of our inner being is every day. It is not just when you come to Lifeline for two hours, you are strengthening yourself. Then the Bible might, might as well just write, our inner being is renewed every single week. Only when I come to church. No, it is not. It's every single day. It's every day we walk with God. That is how we strengthen ourselves. It's not just on Sunday morning, Saturday evening, and Wednesday night. No, it's every day we strengthen ourselves. And when persecution comes, when challenges come, when tribulation comes, we can face it because we have been doing it. It's a daily walk with God. It's not suddenly, oh, something just happened to me. No, it's something that we do every day. I shared this verse before and I'm going to share it again. It's about Daniel. When he knew that he was going to be put in the lion dance, what did he do? He went and prayed. He gave thanks to God. How can he do that? Crazy. It's because it's his custom. He has been doing it since his early day. Let us read that. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Which means it's not something that just suddenly happened. That suddenly when he was about to be thrown in the lion dance, God, 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 help me, help me. How are? Uh? How? I, I'm going to be thrown into the lion dance. Help me, guide me, teach me. Oh, there is no time for that, man. You got to strengthen your faith before the persecution, before the challenges, before the trouble comes. There is a proverb. In Chinese, uh, my mom always say this. She say, sometimes we do things very last minute, right? She will say, why uh, you want to go toilet only you want to prepare the toilet, is it? You need to prepare the toilet first before you want to go to the toilet, right? So, I don't know, maybe in some of your uh, uh, dialect also have this kind of idioms or proverbs. We don't do things when it is about to happen, we start preparing. We start preparing now. So when it happens, we don't get caught off guard. We don't be like, hey, I don't know what to do. For Daniel, when he was about to be thrown into that lion dance, he already knew what he was supposed to do because that is what he has been doing since his early days. Do not expect that every day I walk in my flesh and then tomorrow I'll be spiritual. The Bible says what you sow is what you will reap. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows in the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. From here we can see Paul is saying, do not, do not be deceived. God is not mock. Whatever that we sow is whatever that we will reap. If we sow much on our flesh, we will reap the things of the flesh. If we sow more things in the spirit, we will reap 
more things in the spirit. So it is a daily things that we must do. We need to walk by faith, not by sight. We need to walk in the spirit daily, feeding ourselves with the word of God, feeding ourselves with the sermons, and not only weekly, but daily. So that when the time comes, when the challenges comes, we don't get caught off guard. We don't start preparing things because we already prepared. We know that all this are a strengthening process. And the scripture says, in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. My second point is do not lose heart. The strengthening process can be very long. The strengthening process can be very difficult and very challenging. Sometimes we feel like giving up. We feel like, I don't think I can make this. I don't think I can do this anymore. We will lose heart. If we are not strong, strengthening process, right? You go to gym, you run. Uh. Run, 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 run. One day you will feel very tired, I don't want to go anymore. Do not lose heart. The Bible says, do not lose heart. Let us go back to our main verse for today. I'm going to read you in NKJV version now. Let us read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outer man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Here it says that, Therefore, don't lose heart. Why Paul can say this? It's because he view the challenges, the persecution, the troubles, the affliction that he's going through in the light of eternity. He says, for our light, our light, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Pay attention to this. He says, light affliction for a moment. It's working for us a far more exceedingly eternal weight of glory. You see there, the light affliction, he compare it with the weight of glory. One is very light as compared to eternity. One is very weight, very heavy. One is for a moment, one is eternal. When Paul sees this, he saw his affliction. He says, what is this light and momentary affliction as compared to the eternal weight of glory? When we see our challenges, do we see it as big as the trouble already cover our eyes? We cannot even see anything else. Or do we see it as, God, this is light affliction and it's just for a moment what is this as compared to the eternal weight of glory what is this as compared to what you have prepared for me the new heaven and new earth so this is what I want to encourage you when we face trouble and challenges know that God I know this is a strengthening process from you and this process is needed for my journey of faith and this trouble, this persecution, these challenges is just light and momentarily. It's not eternal. Your promise is the one that is eternal. Comparing your trouble, comparing your challenges and persecution with the eternal 
glory of God. Remember this. Always view our challenges, our persecution, our trouble in the light of eternity. Then we won't lose heart. Then we won't lose heart. If we view it in our flesh, we will feel very discouraged. We will feel that I cannot go through this. This is too difficult. This is too challenging. Of course, because you view it in your own flesh. View it in the light of eternity. When you view it in the light of eternity, you will know that these challenges is light and momentary. It is not going to last forever. Today you suffer of this issue. Next year you will even forget about this issue that you face. Maybe if the issue is very big, maybe you'll remember after a few years. But if just a simple thing, trust me, we will forget. Because it's light and momentary. Always view our challenges in the light of eternity. Then we will not lose heart. Because giving up is easy. Giving up is easier than persevering. When we don't like something, I'll just throw it away. Lah. It's easier to throw it away and just get a new one, you know, just move on. But that's not what God taught us. God taught us what is perseverance. God taught us what is patience. God taught us how to strengthen our faith so that we can go through the challenges. Let us see this, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. It says, We are like common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure within, so that this immeasurable power will be seen as God's, not ours. Though we experience every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. At times, we don't know what to do. But quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others. But God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but not out. It says here, sometimes we go through our challenges and persecution, we don't know what to do. At times, we don't know what to do. But know this, quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option for his elect, born again child of God. Don't because of your persecution and your challenges and your troubles, you just, I don't want this faith anymore. This is just too difficult. When we walk in our flesh, we will do that. But when we walk in the spirit, we know that God, you are the one who strengthened me. You are the one that caused me to persevere in this journey of faith. And I know that quitting is not an option. God, I don't know what to do. He says, at times we don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this issue. This is just too complex. But quitting is not an option. We don't lose heart. We don't give up on the faith just because of the persecution. Remember what I said? We are to view our affliction, our trouble, our issue in the light of eternity. When we view it in the light of eternity, we see that it is a light and momentary affliction. Don't because of this light and momentary affliction, we give out the faith that way much more than this light affliction. Light and momentary affliction. Remember how we started the message? Jesus tell us, He warned us, He tell us in advance, these things I have spoken to you, that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Today, we who believe in the gospel of God's righteousness, we who believe in this faith of God's righteousness, Jesus' baptism, death and resurrection, we can overcome the world. This is the faith that help us to overcome the world. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. 
And the scripture doesn't end here, as I mentioned just now. The scripture goes on and says that this is he who came by water and blood. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Holy Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is the truth. There are three witnesses in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And there are three witnesses on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. All of them work cohesively. And today, when we have the right faith in our heart, we can overcome the world. Until and unless we have this faith, we can never overcome the world. The world is just too challenging, too many persecution, too many challenges that we sometimes, like what the scripture says, don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. But quitting is not an option for us. Because this light and momentary affliction cannot be compared to the eternal glory that He is preparing for us. Amen? And 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 11, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, stay fast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while perfect, establish, strengthen and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Peter is saying, may the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered for a very long time? No, it says, suffered a while. In this world, Jesus said, we will have tribulation. We will suffer. Your suffering is only for a while. Do not give up this faith for this short leaf and light momentary affliction. And he also encouraged us. He said, the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. All of us. Just now we did our impart, right? We can see that every one of us experienced some sort of suffering, some sort of persecution, some sort of trouble, some sorts of difficulties. The same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. We are to stand strong in our faith. Persecution will come. Jesus already warned us. But what did he say? Only those who stand firm will be safe. It's not how we start our journey of faith. You can be very strong today. I'm speaking about myself as well. I can be very strong today. I do not know what will happen to me tomorrow. What will happen to me next week? We need to be very careful. Strengthen our faith. Be faithful to the gospel till the end. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 to 14. The same verse. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be safe. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Only those who stand firm will be safe at the end. If we don't stand firm, we may lose out this faith. The world is too attractive. The world is too challenging. The world is full of suffering. We don't put our hope here in this world. Whatever that you are going through, know that God is faithful. He will carry you through. What we need to do on our part is we just need to strengthen our faith. Continue to put our trust in Him, knowing that 
his plan, his promises, everything that he is, is true. Do not seek, do not last after the things of this world. How I started the message, the world will be destroyed. If we continue to last after the things of this world, we may lose our faith because the love of the gospel will grow cold. That's what the scripture says. What's the use of us having so many things that we desire, our dream job, our dream car, our dream house, and forfeit your soul? What is more important is our faith. Our faith in the gospel. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? This gospel is too precious to be given up. This gospel is just too precious. Our challenges, our persecution, our trouble is just light and momentary. Do not think that your challenges will last forever. It will not. God will bring you a way out. But we on our side, we need to stand true. We need to fix our eyes on Him. We need to fix our eyes and see things in the light of eternity. Do not make decisions that will forfeit your soul. Whatever decision that you will make in the future, or if currently some of you may have big decisions to make, do not make haste decision which will impact your salvation. This salvation is just too great to be lost. Let us continue to fix our eyes upon Him. Thank you.